Many visitors, when they come to Yellowstone National Park, don't realize that they're in one of the world's largest active volcanoes. All the hydrothermal, the hot water features in this park, are the result of the Yellowstone volcano. The volcano gives us much of our elevation we have in this area because it heats the ground, that ground is less dense, so we have a high volcanic plateau here of 8,000 feet. It has supplied many of the rocks and the soils that are in this area, so the vegetation is responsive to the Yellowstone volcano, and of course the animals are responsive to the vegetation. The simplest, perhaps most eloquent way to describe it is the heart of Yellowstone. Yellowstone would not exist without the presence of the volcano. First think of the ground surface and then let's start having a mass of very hot molten rock which we call magma moving up towards the surface. As it moves up it starts to break the overlying rock and those breaks basically are earthquakes. So in the area on the ground surface above the molten rock which is moving up there will be hundreds to thousands of earthquakes per day and those earthquakes will probably be in the 4.5 magnitude range or larger. The other thing that occurs as this gets close to the surface, the ground starts to deform. It actually gets bent. So in the area of the earthquakes, you should also see significant ground deformation. Sometimes up to a yard a year may occur preceding an eruption. Also, we would expect to see changes in the hot water features, the geysers and hot springs as this molten rock gets near the surface, and we would expect to see changes in the geothermal gases that come from the ground. Now, do we have earthquake swarms in the park? Definitely. Do we have ground deformation? Definitely. Does the hydrothermal system change every day? But are those signs of an impending eruption? No. All these things have to be coincident in the same area and very concentrated, a greater magnitude, and much, many more of them than we currently see. So having an earthquake swarm near Norris and ground deformation uh, in the White Lake area and changes in the thermal system in Mammoth, they're all part of the normal vital signs of this volcano and there has been nothing that has been indicated that there is an impending eruption. In the summer of 2014, there was a three mile section of road along the Firehole Lake Drive, which is a side road that is north of the Old Faithful area that was closed because the pavement had become soft and road oil was seeping up through the pavement. Reports were that this was due to increased geothermal activity in the area and also people then became concerned that this indicated increased volcanic activity in the area. And this wasn't the case. Yes, the road is in an active geothermal area. It's a side road that allows people to view great fountain geysers, white dome geysers, other thermal features. As such, the road is on very hot ground. When we get a very hot day in the summer with all the sun beating down on the black asphalt and the road had recently been chip sealed so all the cracks in the road were sealed with oil which not only stopped the rain from getting into the road but stopped the hot geothermal vapors from escaping the road. So the three things of very hot air temperatures above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, the road being in a thermal area, and the asphalt basically being sealed by new road oil that was black, all coupled to deform the road. Within two days, uh, our park maintenance crews had been out and worked on the road and fixed it. It's open for travel and has been ever since. Uh, after the ori original two days closure. This also happened back in 2002 when a segment of the road near White Dome Geyser approached 196 degrees Fahrenheit, the asphalt became soft, and there what occurred was roughly a 60-foot area uh, of the road, the asphalt was stripped off, 
which allowed the road to breathe. Gravel was placed there, and that segment of road has been open ever since. First, let's describe what a super eruption is. It's just a very, very large eruption, an eruption of at least 240 cubic miles of molten material, and usually that molten material is forcefully vented into the atmosphere. It's not just one large explosion, but through time, there's a lot of molten material vented into the atmosphere. In Yellowstone's past, there have been two super eruptions, one at 2.1 million years ago that was about 600 cubic miles of molten material and one 640,000 years ago that was 240 cubic miles. To put that in comparison, the eruption of Mount St. Helens was about 0.1 cubic miles. So the super eruptions are very large. They do change uh, basically world climate, temperatures, everything else due to the volcanic ashes and gases that are uh, expelled. Do we know if there will ever be another super eruption of Yellowstone? No, we don't. The volcano experts who study Yellowstone, the volcanologists, do not know if there will be another super eruption of Yellowstone. Is volcanic activity and volcanic eruptions, are they in Yellowstone's future? Definitely. But the most probable eruptions are much smaller than these super eruptions. Now by smaller, we, we may mean they might be as large as a Mount St. Helens sort of eruption, or even much smaller than that. Maybe an individual vent that puts out a very nice Hawaiian type basalt flow. A very robust monitoring network is in place in Yellowstone National Park that monitors earthquakes, monitors ground deformation, monitors stress and strain within the earth, and all these data are online real time through the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. So none of those data, which are publicly available, have ever indicated to the experts that there's even a potentially small impending eruption. One of the important aspects of the monitoring equipment is to be able to give scientists the ability to predict in advance when an eruption is going to occur. And in its simplest form, the larger the potential eruption, the more molten rock that's coming up over a greater area, the more signals that will occur, the more earthquakes that will occur, the larger the area affected, the more the ground deformation will be occurring in that area, and uh, the more there will be changes in the thermal system and gases. So the larger the eruption, the more advanced notice there will be, and the smaller the eruption, the less advanced notice. But that's the way we would hope it would be, because the smaller the eruption, the less the effect of it uh, to Yellowstone or even to smaller areas than just the park itself. 